So class, we're working on pixel art today. You need to have Photoshop open. And you're going to make a new blank file. So the size you're going to be working with, because we're just working very small uh, pixels, is going to be in pixels. You're going to go anywhere between 16 and 50. I'm going to do 30. And the resolution is fine at 72, which is usually the web size people work with. Don't worry about naming it right now. Oh, keep your background transparent just temporarily, and we can fill in in layers later. Press OK. So bring your window up to the orange bar so it maximizes the size. Zoom in by either holding Alt and scrolling with your scroll wheel on your mouse, or hold Control and Space Bar at the same time, and drag a box around the area you want to have zoomed into. I'm going to zoom a little bit out from that by pressing control and the minus sign. That's three different ways to zoom in and out that you just learned. Um, zooming in would be control and the plus sign. That's another shortcut. Now, we haven't discussed what the theme of this uh, project is going to be. We're basically making an administrative professional's day card. And we're making these little sprite-like pixel art uh, elements that will go on the front of the card. So uh, it could be... I don't know, like an award or something like that, uh, a medallion, a trophy. Um, I was working from the assumption that we'd be using uh, various tools that the administrative professionals use at our school. So beginning with the pencil tool, which is nested inside the, the brush, you just click and hold to reveal all the other tools that are underneath there. Tools that have uh, nested other tools have a little black triangle in them. So you'll see those appear. So using the pencil tool and changing the uh, the default brushes to square brushes and making sure that the pixel, um, the size is one pixel, uh, you can be sure that whenever you make a mark now it's going to be uh, just a, a single pixel. And press control Z to undo. Uh, let's say my uh, element is going to be a, a pencil. Or let's do a file folder. So there's this uh, window down here called color swatches. The way to make that visible is to go to window and color swatches. You can see it'll disappear if you click that off. Color swatches will let you select whatever color you you have as your foreground color. So if I want to make my full file folder as like a kind of a, I don't know, like a manila e brown kind of thing, maybe it should be lighter, um, and press OK. Then by clicking this little square beside the garbage can to create a new color sw swatch, uh, it'll deposit it right there. And generally when you're picking colors for this sort of thing, you want to have a, a small range of colors that uh, are uh, lighter and darker than what you have uh, as your base color so that you can give the illusion of, of lighting and some three-dimensionality. So let's make our, our light color like that and I'm going to add that to it and I'm going to add as well going back to this original base color um, a, a darker uh, kind of uh, shade of that. So let's just start simply with those three. You can, hopefully you'll get more complicated with it. So with my um, pencil tool and my base color, I'm just going to start uh, outlining maybe the shape that this file folder is going to be. There's the kind of tab that sticks out. Um, should extend a little bit beyond there. And kind of almost like uh, the Windows icon, I'm going to have uh, the file folder somewhat open so that we can see the contents. If you run out of room, um, you can change the canvas size by going to image, resize, canvas size, and if you start on the left side and you increase pixels over to the right, um, you could change the width to, let's say, 32, and you'll have some stuff over there uh, to work with. So, um, so let's say that's my uh, beginning to the file folder. Oops, I went a little far there. Consider that the back of this folder is about, couldn't be farther than this point. 
That's where the paper wraps around at the bottom. And uh, one neat technique that you might not know about and will be helpful is if you're trying to draw a straight line, you can begin your mark and hold down shift as you draw. And even though I'm going up and down over top of my desired line, it'll still draw a straight one. So that's a, a helpful tool. You can also use the paint bucket tool to fill in those mass areas of color. I'll just save this temporarily so I keep my outline. Uh, let's drop in some dark pixels there. And now I can fill it in using my base color. I'm not tremendously happy with the the tone of that, so I'll have to go back and uh, and work on that. Using the pencil tool, if I wanted to uh, change that color uh, and shortcut to the eyedropper tool, which helps you select colors, I'd like to eyedrop um, this dark color so I can hold Alt while I'm using a, a drawing tool and the eyedropper appears and I can click that and now the foreground color is set to that color. I'm going to lighten that up a bit and uh, replace that um, with this and hopefully we'll begin to um, get a sense of this getting lighter and lighter. The more dull you get as well, the more towards gray, the farther something seems back. So it can create a sense of depth by, as you go to into the distance, make it less saturated or more gray. So another way of saying that. Uh, I feel like there might be too much at this tab here, and I need to add a, I would say a, a few more of these pixels down here to make this look comfortable to my eyes. And again, I'm holding Alt to select the color to, to add those pixels conveniently. So using an eraser tool, I can, um, in the block mode, brush mode will um, create a fuzzy effect, a fuzzy edge, blends the brush stroke to the content it's erasing, Control Z to undo, or you can use the block, which I think is a convenient uh, tool to erase um, some of those things that, that, uh, that you hadn't originally intended to, uh, to have. Let's make that a little, little smaller. Okay, we're happy with that. We're going to save. In this class, as usual, we save last name dot first name dash min profile folder. And uh, I'm going to save it on my USB. Let's just say my USB is, uh, for the moment, um, in that for students. Uh, location. I'd like you guys to have this, so I'll make it available to you as well in the out folder. Anyway, so we got my file folder .psd. We're going to save it. So it's ready to go for the card, but as you can see, if we look at the um, in view at the actual pixels, this thing is, is too dinky for a card. So we need to resize it. Again, image, resize, image size. We've been working on this this week. And the resolution uh, can be up to 300. And the width, I recommend anywhere between 1.5 inches and 3 inches because it's fitting on a 4 inch uh, tall card. So let's, let me do 1.5. And I'm okay with the height being constrained in its proportion. Now we just have to make sure that we're going to click nearest neighbor as we resize this so it maintains its blockiness. And press OK. So this is uh, now one and a half inches wide and it can be deposited on our card which we haven't actually made yet. So let's make a new blank file. This one instead of being in pixels is going to be in inches. The resolution because we will print it out is going to be 300. It's always, uh, I would say, in a minimum for the printing industry. And the width, we were going to make 6 inches wide and 4 inches high um, to make a, a landscape kind of format to the card. I think most of the uh, sprites you guys are going to be creating or pixel art, it's going to be mostly wider than it is tall. So let's go with that. Uh, this background is transparent. That's fine with me. And using the Move tool, we are going to drag this layer 
into here so that we just bring this up to the orange bar so that now the front of our card is going to have one of these and depending on our our design we might like to have uh more than uh one of these maybe it's it's three that we'd like to have dispersed on the front of this card one way to do that is to hold control and alt over top of your layer click and drag to the side now to make sure that it's exactly straight along you'll notice i haven't let go yet straight along the same pathway as this one I can hold shift simultaneously and even though I'm moving up and down it's staying locked along that horizontal and that'll duplicate automatically another layer you can do the same thing by going to duplicate layer press ok and then take this and move it hold shift while you're moving it so that it uh, so that you can disperse those across the, the whole scene uh, you can make another layer as well maybe layer one you want to have a colored background uh, the fill tool would be the good tool for that, and if you want to make it feel a little, um, I don't know, kind of bland, you might you might give that kind of look. If uh, you wanted to give it a, a zippy, contemporary kind of feel, you might go with a, I don't know, like a robin's egg blue or something. Maybe they'd like that. I feel like this is lacking in contrast, so we would need to create a, a separation between the background color and the foreground color. So let's just see. This color is about here, and we would need to go um, with this blue a lot lighter. So let's go to there, let's say, bring it back to this blue part of our spectrum, uh, and deposit that. Now, more contrast, but it might not have the same kind of effect. Um, so this is would be the front of our card. Uh, one of you guys is going to be volunteering to do the lettering for it. So we might have kind of like a blocky inspired lettering. And uh, let's save this as the um, cache.mr-admin-pro front. Front of the card. And that's my thing that would be sent in.